Is spell casting an art or is it science? I believe it's both and I will show you why in today's video. When crafting spells, it is equally important to pay attention to details and to select the appropriate tools to use in order to ensure your success. Keep watching to learn how to craft a spell that will actually work for you, utilizing my six essential steps to successful spell casting. Greetings, welcome to Crone House. I'm very happy that you joined me today because I'm going to be answering a question that I get so often from viewers concerning setting up a spell, how I go about creating a spell for whatever purpose, okay? Now today, I'm going to be setting up a special healing spell and it's a personal spell for myself. While I'm not gonna be sharing details of the reasons for it, um, I thought it would be a good a good example to show you because it's a long-term spell. It's going to take place over a, a long time. I can, I can show you some things that I'll be doing, but it's chock full of ideas for you, chock full of ideas that you can adapt in some way for some of the spells you want to make that are not healing spells. It's good. I, it just tells you the process. And because it's so involved, I have so many things involved in it, maybe it'll give you ideas that you didn't think of in the past. Now, if that's too much for you, if you don't want to sit here and listen to me talk about this big, long healing spell, um, I suggest you leave and come back in a week or two, a couple weeks. I'm going to be setting up another spell for you to show you that is a much shorter, more common kind of a spell. I'm going to go through the steps of how I choose for that one. So um, I hope that's between this spell, between this video and the next video that I put up, I hope that's going to answer most of your questions. But of course, if you have other questions, feel free to ask me at any time. One of the things that I'm going to show you, of course, right off the bat is how I go about selecting the tools that I want to use to assist my magic. Okay. I'm talking about what style, I'll decide what kind of incense I use or what kind of candles I use or what kind of oils or, or, um, or herbs or whatever I use. What is my, what is the process I go to select that? Now, of course, I have said in the past that we do not need to use all these tools in order to do magic. You don't have to go out to the store and buy things just so you can do a spell. But I do want to say that I doubt, I know that I am not powerful enough and I doubt that many of you watching me are powerful enough to set a spell that is really going to be successful without getting seeking some kind of assistance from some of our magical tools because this is this is the part this is a science this is part of it this is the part that's the real science of magic we know scientifically what the properties are of color we know what is the properties of of different kind of herbs and flowers and and if you doubt me pick up one of the herb books from any shop in any bookstore for healing herbs and the properties of herbs and flowers and what they can do for your health, what they can do for your skin. You know, the, our creams, our lotions are full of these magical herbs. So what can they also do for our spells? Okay. We know the properties. We know what moods, how our mood is affected by color. We know, you know, we know how crystals can affect our, our, our um, environment, our, our proximity to them. So they're going to be valuable to use in spells, but we don't need them all. We don't, we don't need to go and get them all. So we're going to talk about how we want to go about and select that carefully. So that's one of the things I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. But the most important thing to remember in that is that the magic is not in your tools. It is not enough for you to put down um, Snowflake obsidian. It is not enough for you to put out lavender or to burn mugwort. It's not enough. The magic is in your intention. These tools are just there to help boost the power of your intention. Okay. To help keep you focused, to help direct that energy towards whatever manifestation you are seeking. So that's what we want to make sure we remember. 
The reason that so many witches do not see success in their spells is because they may be skipping one or more of the essential steps needed to cast a successful spell. And I identify six of those, and that's what I'm going to be sharing for you in this video today. Step number one, <laughs> step number one is that you should only cast spells for something that you know will work. Wise witches know that. <laughs> I see all the time on some of the um, forums on the on here online and on in uh, Facebook, places like that, I see um, younger witches usually ask for spells all the time. Does any, can anybody find me a spell that will keep my boyfriend from looking at other girls? Does anybody have a spell that I can use to win the lottery? Um, help, I need a spell. My high school reunion is coming up in several weeks and I need to look better than I did in high school. Please help me lose 15 pounds fast. Does anybody have a spell? Okay, well these, it sounds ridiculous, but you know what I'm talking about. You've, you've seen them yourself. And these witches, well-intentioned perhaps, but they're, they are practicing wishful thinking rather than witchful thinking. Wishful thinking rather than witchful thinking. And they're just looking for failure, aren't they? Because there's no way, there's no way that I'm going to cast a spell to so that my my boyfriend never looks at another woman. Seriously, do I have control over the lottery? Seriously, do I? Does anybody can anybody do that? If it were able to be done, you would see it being done all the time. It's not able to be done, and that's not the kind of things we want to, to do anyway, right? We want to cast spells for things that we know will help us. Will help achieve the result that we're looking for okay in my case i want to get healthy i want to get some health back now first of all i don't want to alarm anybody i don't have any big serious problem that you need to worry about i'm okay but there's quite a few things about me that really does need to be improved and it needs to be improved now you're not going to see my intention necessarily but you're going to see enough to understand why I am selecting the tools that I'm that I am choosing. Okay, it would be very easy for me to want to just cast a spell to say I want to get better. I want to feel healthier. I want to you know rid myself of some of the problems that I'm having. But that is of course that is that is um, using wishful thinking rather than wishful thinking. Okay, now it's not to say that health is going to just involve the witchcraft. If I'm going to use witchcraft spell work to help me with my health that's not going to be enough either several of you were watching my channel here a couple years ago when my husband suffered a really serious health crisis and i did some intentional witchcraft to help him now my witchcraft did not cure the man of cancer it did not but it certainly helped him and I, as a matter of fact when i started out i was just trying to create something to help him with knee surgery and then in the process of his knee surgery, we found out that he had a much more serious prob problem. So, um, but because I was set up for a long healing process with my magic intentions, I was able to transfer those over and help him with his cancer. Now, it wasn't just me that helped him, um, but because he had a whole team of doctors, first of all, and, and a lot of people with their prayers and intentions from all over the world, actually, who put out a lot of gave him a lot of strength and healing energies. But the magic that I performed um, with his poppet, with his the different incenses and all the kind of things that I used, the oils, enhanced the magic. They created a um, an atmosphere that supported what the doctors were doing, what the people's prayers and intentions were doing. Okay, so we had, that is our arsenal. And that's what I'm looking for in my magic, in my healing today. The second step in casting a successful spell is to be clear about your intention. Now that sounds like, of course, you know, it's obvious, isn't it? Well, not always, because I think a lot of times we do not say clearly what we want. There's sort of a, um, 
an example that, cir that circulates its way around the witch community on YouTube has for years and years to make this point by saying, if your intention is only to acquire wealth and you set a spell to acquire wealth and all of a sudden you hear someone has died and maybe a relative has died and you are now wealthy because you inherited their wealth. Was it your intention for someone to die to um, inherit wealth? Of course not. And I don't think your magic would ever um, cause death of a person. I mean, that's really exaggerated. But it's exaggerated to make a point that your intention is not to harm another person or to use another person against to do something against their will. But your intention should be very clear. And the more involved your spell is, the bigger your spell is the clearer your intention has to be. And you need to take time, really serious time, to say exactly what your intention was. Last year, I shared a special love spell I created that included a bracelet talisman in order to carry my intention with me when the spell was over. It contained the words we promised each other in our wedding vows, to have, to hold. I researched the actual meaning of this vow and realized my spell's intention so clearly. The words were also included as a part of my spoken intention written inside of a valentine to my love. Remember that the magic is in your intention, not in your things, but in your intention. So you must be very clear about what it is you wish to manifest. Okay? If you're not ready to clearly state your intention, you're not ready to cast a spell. This step cannot be rushed not be rushed okay so take your time to develop your clear intention write it down write it down so that you can say it while you're doing your spell write it down and you're gonna see in my actual spell what I'm going to use for that my own intention must be clearly stated and obtainable my 70 year old ego would love to have the body I had 20 or 30 years ago but that is not a reasonable intention a reasonable intention for a seven-year-old would be to regain some of the physical strength or physical mobility that I might have lost in the last years or to experience the energy of a healthy 70 year old person which I'm really not your intention must be clearly stated and reasonable my 70 year old wish would love nothing more than to be able to bound out of bed each morning and dance my way through the day but that's not a reasonable intention a reasonable intention for me might be to wake up in the morning after a restful night's sleep rather than to be abruptly woken up with sharp arthritic pains throughout my body which have been motionless for hours. This intention must be clearly written to be restated through the duration of the spell. It will be used to help raise the energy during the casting and it will show up again in several ways and when the, after the spell is set, it will be a way I will be feeding my spell by repeating the intention. Take your time with this step. Now the next several steps for spell casting are what I consider to be where the art comes in witchcrafting, okay? Because this is where you're going to personalize your spell and that is number three, that is step number three. Now why do we need to personalize your spell, okay? We can get a spell anywhere. They're all over the internet. There's a lot of books that have them. People have them for sale. Now, I would say I generally do not um, recommend buying spells from other people. Um, I don't really like the practice of buying a spell. I, I will say I don't want to look like a hypocrite because I do spell, sell spell kits. And I am from time to time. I will offer camp spell candles and things like that for sale. Of course, I have my oils for sale. Um, but there's a, those are elements of a spell. They're parts of a spell. They're not a complete spell. Okay. And one of the reasons I don't, I don't like to endorse buying complete spells are that I think a spell will work for you better if you have personalized it to you. A, a spell that your sister-in-law casts for some reason, even if you have the same reason that you want to cast the spell, is going to work better if you put something of your personal self into the spell it's like anything else it just you can't just take something and copy it i mean you could take something and get ideas from it but to 
to make it truly effective, I think you, you probably want to personalize it in some way. Last summer, I showed you how I created a special protection talisman for my dogs to wear at all times. The sigil is unique to Crone House and carries our own personal protection. And no other spell can be more personalized than a witch's jar, especially if it contains bits of your own hair or nails or your own urine. Some people like to have a, to raise power using incantations that rhyme or that they small phrases that they say over and over and over again, like chanting. Some people just like to state, you know, have a whole clear paragraph that they might write right out of their intention. You need to do your own thing. And I will show you again what I'm doing in my spells so that you can see what I choose. But I do different spells in different ways. Depending on the in this spell, and depending on the um, the purpose of the spell, and etc., I will have different ways of doing that. However, method, whatever method you use, be sure that it is personal to you. If copying somebody else's work doesn't ring true to you or doesn't really express your feelings, don't use it. Now, this is where we get to the fun part, at least for me. Because the fourth essential step in creating a successful spell is to choose your tools carefully. Before you can choose the tools you specifically need, you must determine the type of spell you want to cast. Protection spells, for instance, come in many forms. A return to sender often requires a mirror be included to return any negative energies back to the sender. Sometimes we wish to keep protection visibly in place like the witches' purses hung on the doors to our hen and pullet houses in the chicken yard. A binding spell often includes a poppet or some kind of knot magic, such as a witch's ladder, and may be hidden somewhere to access another time. They may be buried or burned as well, so special attention must be paid to the materials they are made from. What is it that you need that will help enhance the magic of your intention? Of what will help what will help now this is where a lot of people go crazy <laughs> because the tendency is for people to use too much they either use too much or they use too little I think in my opinion but this is not the time really to go shopping this is the time to get creative to use your art to use your creativity and to see first of all what you have if you have rosemary growing in your garden or you have lavender or your mother has you know hibiscus or or whatever, see what your where you what do you have access to, that is organic preferably, and um, because you don't want a lot of chemicals messing with your spell, I don't think. But anyway, see what you have on hand. Do you have um, what color candles do you have on hand? What kind of oil do you have on hand? Now you can always use a um, any kind of oil you have. You don't have to have a special oil, but you know you can add things to an oil. You can add things to olive oil or to um, sunflower oil, whatever kind of oil you have, avocado oil. You can add herbs, you can add some little stones. You can have a lot of things like that. So first of all, take inventory of what you have. Don't go shopping and buy crazy things and don't try to copy somebody. But then you need to go and use your head, use your head, use your books, use your um, internet, use me, <laughs> use people that you trust and see what the properties of some of these items are, okay? What color candles do you want? Do you have a color candle or access to a candle that will, rev will, will enhance the magic of your spell? Different color candles will do that for you, but you don't have to have the color. If you just have white or you just have black, that's okay. You can always add, you know, some ribbon or some yarn or something around the base of your candle or something if you want to work the color into your spell, that's okay. Um, oils, the same with the oils. You have the oils to dress and the oil is going to be to dress your candles. Um, it could be a general all-purpose charging oil like I sell with my magic kits. That's okay. Some kind of an all-purpose thing is fine that you use for other things. Um, but see what it is you have. But no matter what it is that you're using for the actual spell, I want to make sure that you add some form of protection in your spell. Now, <laughs> You've seen that with me. I, I just generally use a little black candle that I light. A lot of people have their own things. Or you might have a special herb or a special stone like black obsidian. 
that that helps um you know keep the keep things away bothering the way you can there's a lot of different things you can use but um my spell is going to be sitting out for a long time okay so i really want to have candles that stay out and last so i will be replacing i will be keeping my protection going the whole time if your spell is just a one and done you're doing an afternoon you don't need to use this quite as elaborate of protection as i do but i it's not just from me i'm not necessarily protecting it from evil i'm protecting it from unwanted interference you know i don't want I, people can see very clearly that they come into this room that that's something that is meant to be left alone so when i have a spell set up in here and i have things like that around that they know it, it is meant to be left alone so you can use your judgment for that now i'm going to just show you some of the things that i chose for my spell i might be adding some more things later we'll see but first of all i want to show you i want to tell you that i am based in the timing of my spell on what I showed you, if you saw my my journal um, video, when I set up my journal, that I set up um, the new moon. I worked, I'm working with the, going from an intention that goes from new moon to new moon. And I'm going to time the beginning of my spell with the new moon that will be coming up in um, February, on the 9th of February, exactly. And um, I'm trying to find my page. And I think I shared this in my video. But the moon in February for February is going to be coming up in Aquarius. But basically, the moon in Aquarius I have here in my journal um, reminds us of the, the importance of allies. And that's what I'm using in my spell, all the allies, things that will help me manifest my intention. So I thought that was a really good time to start this at that time. And also I'm keeping track of my play in the field, play in the field items for every day of the moon. This is from January, but I'm going to write down something that I do every day to feed this spell during the February moon. Okay. Um, so some of that I'll, I will bring to you later. But I'm going to show you today some of the things I'm going to be using. Now, again, I wouldn't do that for a one and done spell. This is something that's going to last a while. So this is how I keep the spell going over the period of time that it's going to be set here on my spell table. Okay, so I want to make that clear. Okay, candles, candles, candles. We always have candles. I have a black candle here that I'm going to be setting out for, um, to, to keep, you know, to keep this sacred space here. I'm going to use... A, but a, spell, a skull candle is what I'm going to be using um, to as the spell candle, as my spell candle. And why am I using a skull? Well, I love it because I'm doing a healing spell and uh, the healing that I'm working on is a lot of it has to do with me, <laughs> my intentions, my um, deliberate actions and my way of thinking. I need to change my way of thinking. Well, how do I need to change my way of thinking? I think I mentioned earlier, you know, as a woman in my seventies, we have a tendency in my age to say, Oh, well, of course it's, it's natural to be achy when you wake up in the morning. It's natural to have these, these symptoms. It's naturally to have dry skin. It's naturally to have, you know, lack of energy and not be as, and not be as, um, vigorous as you were when you were younger. So we tend to excuse our behavior rather than try to change it. So I'm going to change my thinking. And I love the skull candle because the skull candle, we can, it can be, this is a simple form of sympathetic magic that is going to represent me. This skull represents me. And I have it in a turquoise. I tried to make it in turquoise as much as I could because I love the color of turquoise, the balance of the blue and green to balance to, um, for healing. That's just my, that's just my personal preference. And I'm going to take our old friend here, the ten penny nail, which um, I use for a lot of things. And I'm going to begin by inscribing intentions, things that I want to keep thinking throughout my spell on on here. I'm just going to write with my nail things that I want to um, that I think is going to help my in my healing. Okay, so I want to put. Um, 
first of all, I have arthritis. I can share that with you. I want to try to try to um, alleviate some of the problems with my arthritis. So one thing that will help <laughs> is movement. So I'm going to put the word movement. I'm going to just write on here. Okay, and I'm going to continue. And I'm going to put everything that I think words that mean something to me and what I'm trying to do with this spell, what I'm trying to um, improve in my life, okay, improve health-wise in my life. I'm going to add keywords on that. So I'm going to do that. That's the first thing I'm going to be doing. Then I'm going to be having something to put the candle on. I love these kind of candle holders because I can put a candle in here or I can flip it over and I get a flat surface of the candle, okay, because I like to have different, different um, heights. So anyway, that's going to go. I'm not going to set this up right now. I will show you towards the end of the video when it's all set up. But right now, I just want to talk to you about it. Okay. What am I going to do after I write all of my keywords on here? Then I'm going to take, and you'll see me do this, and I'm going to oil the candle with my oil, with my intentional oil. And here I'm using black cat oil. Now, for some people, black cat oil is used for a lot of negative um, spells. my book of shadows out so that I can see. I I was looking at some of the properties of some of my oils to decide what I want to use. And the ingredients that I use in my black cat oil when I make it, and I think I sell this, pretty sure I sell this oil. Um, we made it also in the oil workshop if you were there. But this will enhance, um, first of all, it will First of all, it will guard you against, um, it will protect you against evil negative energies. That's one thing that's good. But it also will enhance the intention that's already in whatever it is. It's like, it like boosts it up, boosts it up. Okay. Um, when you use on a green candle for prosperity, it'll boost that spell. It'll make it more prosperous, <laughs> for more prosperity. When you use on, you know, negative black could repel, it will make it more so. It will help it to, to bind or to banish anything that's trying to interfere with you. Um, it contains some special ingredients in it when I made it that also help with that intention, um, drag, including dragon's blood. And dragon's blood is something that increases the potency of any spell that you have. Okay, um, it has a fire strength with black pepper. Um, It gives me, patchouli helps give me the confidence to continue on with my spell. And what else do I have? I have a lot of other things in here. Um, but anyway, the ingredients, so that's what I did. I checked, even a seasoned witch like me, I go back and check what ingredients I put in here to see if this is going to be something that's going to work. So it is going to work. So I will use that. And when I'm laying my spell, you'll see me I will be I will be oiling my candle and since it's going to help with this protection candle I will probably apply some on this candle as well okay so I have that as far as incense goes I'm going to be using a, a different incenses and I have some that I've been making that are cone incenses this is just generally this is just nothing but California white sage of course I use sponges but I'm going to be burning California white sage for a few days um, before I even light this candle, just let this sit here and I'm going to be to keep the area nice and clear until I'm really ready to move on to the spell. But also I have this, um, my Tranquillo blend that I have made here in these cones that I will be using. I will be using some other things, some mugwort cones, um, which are really good for health. For healing so you can see me using some other things coming up okay so those are going to be included on my table I'm also going to have here I'm not going to I have my incense burner hanging up here so that I can have the incense going out of the way of this it's still here but it's not in my face when I'm trying to work here with the, with the spell I'm just using little tiny post-its because I as a, as a 
as an expression of feeding my spell, I'm going to be writing something that I'm done for the day, what I did today, what I didn't stay, to enhance, to feed this spell. For instance, if movement is one of my, my words, I might put on one day, I might do something special, movement. I might do some special yoga. I might do some, take, take an extra walk, take a walk. Let's say I did yoga, I would write yoga. I would take my, the piece of paper and I would light it and then I would put, I keep a cauldron where I, I burn these kind of things in there, throw it in there to burn. And um, that's my feeding for the day. I would light the candles and, and, uh, and I will show you from time to time, if this sounds a little confusing, I'll show you from time to time now how I do it, but you can do it again. Use your, use your creativity, do it any way you wish. Okay. And finally, the other thing, another thing that I'm going to be doing, and you're going to see this later, is I have selected an Oracle deck and I'm so excited about this because this is exactly the use for this deck I've been waiting for. I love this. This is the Wisdom Oracles, Wisdom Keepers Oracle deck, and it's beautiful, but I haven't found a lot of use for it yet. But I did do a video a long time ago using this deck when I first got it, and I realized that in the back of this book, it does have some spreads, which I'm not always real crazy about spreads for Oracle decks, but in the back of this one, it has several that are very applicable to healing and I'm going to be doing one of those coming up and I'm going to show you I'll show you a video of that I've got candles I got protection I've got candles um, I'm going to put intentions on here I'm going to write my hair burn I have some incense I have some oils and enough to get me started enough to get me started and as I as I desire I can be adding things to this table because this table is going to be set for quite a while. Okay, so you're going to see as I do that, you're going to, I'm going to take you along on that journey. Now we come to point five, to the fifth essential step in casting a successful spell is releasing your spell. Now you see us do that. I've done other short spells here and I have, you have seen me, how I release them. I build up the energy and then I release, let it release. Now this spell is going to be sitting here and I'm going to come back and keep feeding it. But every time I feed it, I'm going to use a release as a way of letting go of the spell. Because it's my, it's my feeling that when you do spell work, you do the spell, you finish it, you release the energy, and then you walk away. And you don't carry that with you. You don't worry about it, is it working? You don't look for signs that it's working. You trust in the magic of your spell, if that makes sense. Now, yes, I'm doing it over and over again, which we will talk about in the next step. But in each time that I sit and work with it, I'm going to build up energy again in one way or another, light the candle. I won't oil the candle again, but I will light it. I will burn some more incense. I will say my intention, or I will work with my cards here. I will do something to feed the spell. I will raise the energy again and then I will release it and I will walk away. We have to trust our magic. We have to separate ourselves from the magic and we walk away. But this brings me up to point six, is fortifying your spell. Sometimes one time doesn't do it. Sometime you're trying to do a spell, let's say for prosperity, I really need to raise, I have to figure out a way to raise money to pay my electric bill. It's so high every winter, I just don't know what to do about it. I have to, so you do a spell, you walk away, nothing happens. Does that mean magic is not going to help you? No, it means that maybe you have to do it again. Maybe you have to do it again. Sometimes you do things more than one time. If it doesn't work, try again. It doesn't mean it's not ever going to work. It just means it didn't work yet. It did not work yet. So either feed the spell, if you have it still up, you can feed it and start again, or you can start all over. Okay. By me, Feeding by spell and fortifying the spell. I am repeating, I am repeating that spell again and again and again. 
and I'm going to continue to do so. And I'm going to start to see results for my scalp. You'll watch, you'll see, you'll see. And I'll be sure to let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to get this all set up and then I will show you how I, how I have it set up for, for work. But I'm not going to actually begin my, by lighting this candle until we get to the February 9th, until we get to the new moon in February. But I am going to be doing things before that. So I'm going to get some things out and I'll show you, show you when it's done. But from this time on, this table is going to hold the spell. Okay. Oh, it makes sense. Let's review the steps real quick before I go. Write them down. Number one. And I also I will put them down in the um, description box, box down below. So you can keep these in mind when you're, when you're planning a spell, okay? So number one is only cast spells that you know are going to work for you. Don't practice wishful thinking. Practice witchful thinking. Number two, be very clear about the intention of your spell. Be very clear. Take some time with this. This is the most important part of the spell because this is where your true magic lies. Number three, personalize your spell. Don't just buy one off the internet. If you buy something off the internet, that's fine. But do some things to help personalize it, to make it more about you, to make it more something that you can identify, something that's a something that is an expression that is truly yours, uniquely yours. Okay. Number four, here's the fun. We're getting into fun now, right? Pick your tools carefully. You want your spell to succeed. You want to use things. And if you use your own things, you have a leg up already because they're your, they have some kind of special meaning to you. There might be some memory or some place you got it or something that already has it it'd be very important to you. So if there's magical properties associated with it, all the, all the better. But I've used all kinds of things here. I've used all kinds of things. So just let your imagination go here. Number five, remember to release that spell and your expectations with it. Don't keep checking up on it. Release it, walk away. And remember then you can always come back step six to fortify the spell. Okay. Either feed a spell or start again and do it again. Don't give up on your magic. Don't give up on yourself because you have a lot of magic in you. Okay, there you go. I'm Rebecca. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you blessings.